demo on, on Wednesday. Um, we decided not to do that on stage since we'd have to rush, rush through and everything, but we'll, we'll explain the, the tools in, in detail. Um, and if you already have GSM data or want to artificially generate some to, to challenge us to, to see whether we can decrypt it, please bring those to the workshop. They'll, they'll be a fun exercise. So yeah, we, we are done with the table computation from all we know. Uh, we're just facing the, the, the one last logistical hurdle of, of bringing terabytes of data together in one place. Um, the cracker, by the way, uh, we found that um, the most efficient way of, of um, cracking this is by distributing the tables across USB sticks. So you'll see a computer with some, some 16 to 32, depending on how many tables we find, USB sticks hanging off of it, um, which is the most cost efficient way of, of doing it, it appears. Um, we actually considered a, a lot of different architectures for the cracker and, and figured that the, by far the biggest problem is the, the latency of the drive, which is, which is why flash memory is good. It's got very low throughput and, and obviously we're, we're cascading kind of USB keys and USB hubs off of, off of each other. So the, the, the latency is pretty good because it's, it's USB, it's flash. The bandwidth sucks and we don't care. It, it works very well. <laughs> Yeah, that, that turns out to be the, the biggest bottleneck. But given cheap USB sticks, um, even that doesn't, doesn't increase the cost of the cracker very much anymore. Um, unless there's any questions right now about the general approach, motivation, all of that, um, I'd go a little deeper into, into the technology and how rainbow tables work for now. Is that all right? Any, any questions so far? Okay, so rainbow tables. Um, now starting from the idea of a code book, with just two columns, um, the, 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 the key and the output. Um, we, we want to store this more efficiently, and the way we do it is have a, have a, a codebook with more than two columns, um, starting at a random value that could be a secret key. Um, we apply the A51 function, uh, mark K in this, this picture, um, to derive what we then use as the key into um, the next A51 function, and and so on and so on, and we apply A51 up to a million times um, to then derive our end value, and we'll only store the last and the first value of this chain. We do this for many chains, and we'll only store the yellow and the green in this picture. Now, if we want to, uh, after the fact, after computing a very large such table, um, crack something we observe on the air, say the B951, we see that on the air, we want to know what secret key was used. We apply A51 to this number, arrive at something that we can't find in the yellow, so we have one lookup that goes into nowhere, we apply it again, now we have something that we'll find in our yellow table on our hard disk or USB stick, um, and we know that with, with, some probability, with some high probability, um, the, the key we're looking for is in this chain. So we start at the beginning and compute until we hit the, the value we see in the table, uh, we, we saw in the air, and the value just before that is a secret key. Does that make sense? So if this has sufficient coverage, if, the, if this table is really large, um, then we should be able to decrypt pretty much any, any conversation with this. Now there's two drawbacks to this that, that kind of limit the, the, the size of these tables. Um, both of which have, have found tweaks through, through academic research and through, through this long history of papers. Um, and I want to introduce both ideas. Um, the first idea um, gets around the problem of of um, having to go to the hard disk too often. As, I, as, as we pointed out, um, the hard disk seems to be the bottleneck. And if you have a chain of lengths a million, you'll have to go to the hard disk a million times just to find whether or not um, the value you're looking for is actually stored in your yellow column. Now, the way to get around this is called distinguished points. Um, in distinguished points, you only ever store values in the last table that fulfill a certain criteria. Um, in this case, the criteria being the last half of, of the value is all zeros. So you apply the A51 over and over and over again until you hit a value that fulfills exactly this criteria, and that then is the end of your chain. 
Of course, the chains are of different lengths since you can't really predict when you will hit such a value, but all of which end in the same type of number. Now again, if you observe a, val observe a value on, on the air, you play, apply A51 to it over and over until you hit such a value, and only then you go to the hard disk once and see whether you stored the value. So you dramatically um, decrease the number of hard disk accesses needed. Good so far? So this is, this is a great optimization, and I'm very glad that somebody else um, came up with this before, because this is just ingenious. Um, it still has, has um, it still has one drawback, though, that it shares with the just with the plane tables, and that is um, a fairly high number of collisions or fairly high impact of collisions. Collisions being, um, if you if you ever encounter the same value um, twice in your table, the remainder of of your chain will look exactly the same, and they'll end in the same value, right? In the same distinguished points, since everything is deterministic from there on out. Um, if you do have too many mergers, adding more and more um, lines to this table um, doesn't increase the coverage. So you're creating more and more redundancy without, without actually um, getting closer to breaking calls. Now, what you would do then usually is start a new table. And again, if that fills, uh, that doesn't produce uh, more entropy anymore, you'll, you'll create a new table and so forth, and every new table increases your attack time. So you, it's, um, you're very inefficient. Um, academics have also come up with a great idea to, to get around that problem, and that now is called the rainbow table, um, where in every step of this computation, you apply a slightly different function. These are all still type of A51 function, probably just with, with um, a constant, a different constant XOR into the function. And since all different functions, kind of different colors of a rainbow, this is called the rainbow table. Um, if you do have a collision now in, in a rainbow table, unless the collision happens in exactly the, the same column, um, the chains don't merge since the next computation is going to be different. So that gets you around um, the problem of merger through collisions, which allows you to compute much larger tables, get a, get a higher coverage with, with a smaller number of tables. Um, we tried both approaches. Um, both have, both have their, their advantages, and I think we, we tried. Uh, we are the first to apply both at the same time, um, which is uh, one of the optimizations we pulled to make this much more practical than previous A51 attacks. Um, so we are computing 32 distinguished points, and after each of the distinguished points, change the color of the rainbow. So here's a rainbow with 32 different round functions each round function ending in a distinguished point. Uh, and we only store, again, the last and the first column. OK, um, enough with technical deep dive. I think that, that, was, that was plenty. Um, but I wanted to give you at least one, one, one nugget to, to chew on. Um, if, there's, if there's need to discuss this any further, uh, we do have a mailing list. Um, and, and questions are much appreciated. Um, now, the... Um, the, the, the end result of, of, of applying, applying all these techniques is that we, that we need to, to compute a few terabytes of tables, so something very manageable um, on, on, on cheap hard disks, to be able to decrypt um, calls with a, with a fairly high probability. This probability uh, increases every week since we find more and more sources of known plain text. The more often you get to look up a call in the tables, the higher the chance that you will find this call's secret key in the table, at least the session key. For those um, who, know, um, who know A51 and how it's used in, in GSM, um, every frame starts with the same key, it's called KC, um, and then a random number is applied to it. So in theory, every frame should start with its unique key. Um, turns out that you can um, roll back the A51 to the KC. So breaking any frame during a conversation allows us to, to decrypt all frames. That's some background that, that, might, need, uh, that, that might need to be set to, to convince some people that this is actually um, possible. We'll, we'll post a, the backtracking code on, in, in the SVN pretty soon. It, um, it's, it's pretty much through testing. Um, Okay, so the, 
the, the story now is we, we have computed terabytes of table.